last resort. Margaret, noticing the change in John's demeanor, made her way across the room, her steps quieter than usual. She placed her hand gently on his shoulder, feeling the tension knotted beneath the surface. Together, they stood in silent solidarity, staring at the photograph he held. The house, more than just wood and brick, was a monument to their shared history, a physical embodiment of their journey together. Margaret thought of the garden she had tenderly cultivated, where every bloom told a story of seasons past, and the kitchen, where family recipes had been passed down and perfected. The prospect of foreclosure wasn't just about losing a house. It was about the potential erasure of the tangible evidence of their love and the life they had built together. In the quiet of a rundown living room, where peeling wallpaper narrated the history of better days, they laid out their plan on a battered coffee table that had seen better years. Maps of the town, hand-drawn diagrams of the bank, and a scattered array of notes were illuminated by the flickering light of a single unreliable lamp. Their hands, rough from years of manual labor and failed attempts at sustaining a livelihood, moved with a purpose they hadn't felt in years. They spoke in hushed tones, each suggestion, each potential obstacle, meticulously debated and considered. This wasn't just about the money, it was about reclaiming a sense of control in lives that felt increasingly dictated by forces beyond their reach. The desperation that led them here was palpable, but so too was a flicker of hope, a belief that this audacious act might just be the key to salvaging their futures. In the heart of their small, sleepy town, where every street corner held a memory of their childhood, Alex and Jamie found themselves standing outside the old, abandoned factory that loomed like a silent guardian of their most audacious plan yet. The factory, with its broken windows and graffiti-covered walls, had always been a place they were told to avoid, making it the perfect hideout for their preparations. It was here, amidst the echoes of their footsteps in the vast, empty halls, that they shared their dreams of escape and a better life, far away from the despair that had shadowed their families for generations. The factory, once a symbol of the town's prosperity, now stood as a beacon of hope for the two friends, a place where their plan could take root and grow into the lifeline they so desperately needed. They knew the risks, but the promise of a future where they could define their own destiny fueled their resolve. As the clock struck midnight, the meticulously planned heist was set into motion under the cloak of darkness. The group, a blend of skilled individuals bound by a shared principle of causing no harm, moved with precision and quiet determination. They had chosen their target carefully, a corporation known for unethical practices ensuring that their moral compass guided even this desperate act. Each member played their role flawlessly, from the tech wizard disabling security systems to the smooth talker ensuring any late working employees remained unalarmed and safe. The tension in the air was palpable, a thick blanket of silent anticipation as they navigated through the shadows. Yet, Despite the high stakes and the adrenaline pumping through their veins, there was an unspoken agreement that no one would get hurt. This commitment to nonviolence wasn't just a strategy. It was a testament to their belief that ends did not justify means if those means caused harm. As dawn broke over the sleepy town of Willow Creek, Sheriff Davis found himself standing at the edge of the dense forest that bordered the Miller's property his hand resting on the holster of his gun, a symbol of his authority and duty. The morning mist clung to his uniform, making the badge on his chest glimmer faintly in the early light. 
He had known Tom and Sarah Miller since they were teenagers, watching them grow from high school sweethearts into a couple desperately trying to hold on to their farm amid the town's economic downturn. Now, as he faced them across the clearing, their expressions a mix of defiance and despair, Davis was torn. Here he was, the embodiment of the law, tasked with evicting them from the only home they had ever known, on orders that came from far beyond the borders of Willow Creek. Yet, his heart ached for them, understanding too well the pain and injustice of their situation. In this moment, Sheriff Davis was not just an officer of the law. He was a friend, a neighbor, and a witness to the relentless struggle of the human spirit against the cold machinery of bureaucracy. In the wake of the tragedy that befell the Thompson family, the residents of Willow Creek demonstrated the profound depth of their unity and altruism. The community center, usually a venue for celebrations and gatherings, transformed into a beacon of hope and solidarity that day. Tables laden with donated clothes, toys, books, and household items stretched across the hall, each article a silent testament to the community's willingness to help one of their own in times of dire need. Local businesses, too, contributed generously, offering services, gift cards, and financial aid to assist the family in rebuilding their lives. Amidst this overwhelming display of support, Thompson, with tears glistening in her eyes, held her children close, whispering words of gratitude. The sight of the entire town, from the elderly sitting on folding chairs, sharing words of encouragement, to the youngest children clutching their own beloved toys, now given as gifts to the Thompson kids, was a powerful reminder of the strength that lies in unity and the impact of collective compassion in overcoming adversity. James, with his back curved from years of labor and eyes that had seen the evolution of their little world, stood beside Eleanor, his resolve as steadfast as it had been on their wedding day. The town, with its boarded up shops and silent streets, seemed to hold its breath, watching as this couple, its very soul, prepared to battle the tides of change. James, a man of few words, had always believed actions spoke louder, and in this moment, his every move was a declaration of war against the forces threatening to erase their legacy. Together, they began to sift through the artifacts of their life, each photograph, each memento, not just a memory, but a soldier in their fight to preserve the sanctity of their home and its stories. In their hearts, they knew this wasn't just about saving a house or even a town. It was about safeguarding a lifetime of love, a beacon for generations to come. <laughs>